there. Got him. Got him. Got him? Ooh, big yep. one. Big one. Oh, that did not. What's in? Uh, oh, he's off. What? Troy? That was huh. a big that was a big animal. Yeah. Like musky sized fish. Yeah. Wow. Bucktail. Huh. Right there, big one right there. Look at him right there. Right there. Oops. Oh, oh there's, there's one. Uh, there's <laughs> one. You're looking at one what? I, I'm looking at one and there's another one there. That's a good one. Come here. That's a good, nice, nice size pike. Look at him. Whoa. There we go. Come here, buddy. Come on, come on, you little rut, you. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Come here. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Scoop them just like just that. Leave nice. them in the, leave them in the net and I'll get, yeah. I'll get the correct tools right here. You never go to Canada without the right tools. I like fishing these uh, single hook baits. Oop, like that. Get them right out of there. Boy, look at a healthy fish. That's one thing, you know, we're on so many of these lakes at Gull Rock and Red Lake, a lot of these Canadian lakes have tremendous populations of not only northern pike, but one of the biggest things is the forage. And that's tulipies and whitefish. Look at that nice fish. Beautiful animal. Look at that. Boy, wide body. Pretty, pretty animal. We'll get her back in the water. Come on. Wow, come on. Come on. Boy, are they cool, really cool looking fish. Wow. There you go. Nice. How do you like that? My new favorite lake. Yeah. <laughs> I'm easy. Two bites right away. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves. Adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. You know, it's interesting, we're up here in the uh, second week of September, and so many people like coming up to Canada in spring. I, I know one thing, I've actually been up here, you know, throughout the summer, fall, and spring, and actually uh, summer and fall is one of my favorite times of the year to come up here. The reason why is a lot of times we have a lot more fish concentrated in smaller areas, you know, whether a, a lot of times like the walleyes that are like in this lake are probably gonna be piled up around the deep water basins. You got a, these big flushes of pike coming into the, into the bays, and you can still, we could probably catch some of these big pike out in deeper water as well. But it's a good time of the year to come to Sunset Country. There, got it, got it, got it. Another one? Big one. Yep. Yeah, there you oh. go. Whoa. This is probably about five casts after James landed his. This is a big one. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be one of my biggest pike in many, many years. I can tell you that much. Oh yeah. Nice one. Oh yeah. Come here, buddy. In there. Wow. That was easy. There you go. I'll move them back, I'll move them back over by, yeah. you, by you wow. here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that fish. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> wow. That's a, wow. Wow. <laughs> that's the biggest pike I've caught in, in many, many years. This was five casts after James caught his. Time to get this thing back and keep hunting for more. Wow, what a way to start the trip. Absolutely incredible. Aren't they pretty? Gosh, yeah. they're wild. Wow, wow. Look, look at the girth on those things. Jeez. What? I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Wow, wow. A lot of people think that northern pike are always up in shallow water weed beds, but realistically, uh, they're pretty temperature sensitive in many lakes. When the water gets too warm, what they do is they, once it gets above like 65, 67 degrees throughout the summer, they dump out into deeper water basins. But in fall again, like we're up here in the second week of September, that water temperature right now is at like it's almost perfect. It's 64 degrees. A lot of those fish, the big fish that we're feeding on deep water forage, ciscos and tulipies in the deep water, come back into the shallow water, uh, big cabbage beds. You know they they move a lot. You know, and but one thing you get in the right systems where they actually have tremendous populations of those great big ones. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. You know, one thing that's really key, 
right now is finding weeds. And well, well, how do you go find that in a Canadian lake? When you look at these lakes, I mean, they're rock everywhere, but there is a little bit of an art to go finding them. And, and part of it is using my Lake Master map. And what I can do with this, uh, the deep weeds in this lake grow to about eight foot of water. So what I did is put my uh, shallow water highlight at about 10 foot. And then what I do is look at the contours in the backs of these bays, these really big, slow, tapered uh, bays. And you can see we have a creek coming in here, but you can see we have a really big, tapered flat in here. And a lot of times, what that is, you get in the back ends of these bays, that's where you'll find sand, not only sand, you have this fertility coming in, and you'll find these big weed beds. And that's what we've, we've been doing, just hopscotching around. When you look at the map, we've been just running down the lake, going to every back end of the bay, but you'll notice the one thing where we've also been targeting it, it's directly associated to the main basin of the lake, the deeper water. A lot of times, you know, intermittently these fish are going out and feeding on these deep water tulipies and ciscos, then they move back into the bay. Oh, there. Yeah. yeah. Boy, oh, just. <laughs> that one? Yeah, right near the boat. That one just kind of came up. I'm throwing that inline spinner. And Running kind of under the surface, so that one came off. That might be. Wow. Oh, oh. Another. <laughs> they are. What? Boy, they are fun. This will be an easy hook out when they're right at the top of the mouth there. Yeah, he's perfect. You, oh, want, yeah. you want to just, just unhook him right up outside? You could, yeah, just unhook, well, you could just unhook him. Yeah, I might be able to. Yeah, he's kind of. Sometimes they. Uh, you got him snouted so nicely. Sometimes when they're, yeah, this one isn't real big. There's some just some giants in here. Come here. Oh, yeah. Easy one. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes when they, oh, look at that. This is nice. It's one little pop like that, and the fish is out. Nice one. Look at that. You know, pike are really unlike walleyes or bass where you're going to find a, a rock pile or a weed bed and there's a whole bunch of them in a really small spot. The weird thing is, is the way these fish lay out, you get a big weed bed and the fish will be spread out so it gives you a little bit of inkling of how you have to fish them. That's why we're moving along pretty rapidly. We're coming through there and we're looking for the hot biters and moving on and just hopscotching bay to bay to bay to bay. I'm just pulling up along this island here when I see all these cattails, thinking that there might be uh, some other uh, weed bed out in front of it. You can see all these bulrushes out in front of the weeds, here, in front of the island here. Oh, there he was. I cast it right to him. I said, there's one. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one there. Come yeah. buddy. Oh, yeah. Look at the size of that little whippersnapper. <laughs> That's a real one. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Come here, buddy. Come here. Boy, that's a good that's a oh, good yeah, one. Oh, yeah. That's, another, that's, that's a pretty up. That's a That's a sporty one. Can we get a talon? No, nope. Nope, we're all right. Play him out. Okay. Come here, buddy. Ooh, yeah. Oh, Look at yeah. that one there. Ooh. Come here. Come here. Where'd he go? There. There we go. Wow. Nice little scoop. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. another size up. You know, that's what I was saying. We're really running gun fishing. We're, you know, covering a lot of water really quickly with pretty uh, fast moving baits because, you know, you're really looking for the, uh, these are really aggressive predators. Boy, that's a beautiful fish. Come here, buddy. Look at that thing. That's a beautiful pike. Look at that thing. Look at that. Gorgeous animal. Wow. Let's measure this one here. We've got a ruler on here. She's probably a, about a 40, 41, 41 and a quarter. But look at the girth on that thing. Beautiful, beautiful fish. We'll get her back in the water. That's a real wide body there. Come here. Come here. Wow. Whoa. Nice job, man. Now that's serious pike fishing. <laughs> yeah, you hit them at the right time. Yeah. And I'm not kidding you. That's what a lot of people come up here to Canada. You know, while walleye fishing is a big thing. You know, we have fabulous smallmouth bass up in Sunset Country. But northern pike, if you like to fish, they're one fun, tough customer.
They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these Daiwa drags. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. This bait is legendary. You know, when you're thinking about pike fishing, there's three different ways to kind of break it down when you're talking about the action of the baits. Side to side, kind of a, a jigging up and down, and then a straight line. Now I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth. James is throwing this boxer head jig, a one ounce boxer head. This is a seven inch big bite bait suicide chat. He's jigging it and snap jigging it across the bottom, almost like he's bass fishing or walleye fishing, snapping it up off the bottom. I actually had one follow my glide bait. So this is a nice erratic side to side action on this as well. When we're talking about erratic side to side, well, you gotta mention the bigger X wrap without question. And also, I've got a few, I've been doing really good in this actually number of fish on this size six inline spinner from Blue Fox. This thing is, is dynamite and this is a straight line retrieve. So these three actions, depending on the mood of the fish, are very, very important. Experiment with all three. You're gonna find one that predominantly works excellent throughout the day. Something like this, straight line, just cast it out and burn it in and the fish just crush it. Oh, yep, got it. Right at the tip of the, the tip of that weed bed out there. Size. A nice one, yeah. I mean, they're all nice. I don't know, one might be a little bigger. You got an alligator? Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like that. Yeah, this is a gator. Jack, jackfish. Yeah. Yeah, this is a little gator the gr here. Great Northern Pike. Yeah. Might need a second here. Well, I kind of swing to this side of the boat. Wait a uh. second. Wow. Oh, the average yeah. size this structure of the fish we've yeah, been seeing. Yeah, that's the thing. Wow, that's a sporty one. That's a sporty one. All right, just sit right there wow. and see. Sorry about that. Oh, wow. That's a nice wow. easy scoop. Wow. Oh, yeah, there we <laughs> yeah, it looks <laughs> nice. Wow. All right, now I woke up. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, oh my gosh. Look. Another just beautiful. These, these fish are so clean and so incredible. I mean, this is, this is real pike fishing. This is just so awesome. Wow. Get over that. The nice thing about this boxer head and the suicide shad combo is the fact I can fix, fish it a variety of different ways. I can feel it, or reel it really, really fast, almost like an inline spinner bait. By the same token, I, if the fish are more inactive, I can actually jig the bait off the bottom. And I've been catching fish both ways. When the fish were really active, like in the morning, I was just reeling it, almost like an inline spinner bait. It's really just really, really fast. But this afternoon, after they sort of slowed down, I've been doing a lot more bouncing the bait intermittently on the bottom, jigging it up off the bottom. When these fish get inactive, a lot of times what they do is they'll just drop down to the bottom and sit in the weeds. Got him. Yeah? Got him. That's. Whoop, whoop, watch yourself. Whoop, got whoop. You, gotcha, gotcha. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Switch. Wow. Ah. Yeah, that's a little there. shaking bait. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. You can wow. call him up sometimes with the swim bait and then. Wow. Oh, nice. That's a big one there. Yeah. I'll get the net when you. Oh. Yeah, you just get that. If you lift up your lip. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, no, some, no. Look at that fatty. Wow. Oh, yeah. Look at that thing. Lead them right into that. There scoop. we go. Wow. Nice easy scoop for you. Wow. That was that was cool. Yeah. Beautiful fish though. I mean, look at that thing. Lots of them. You know, one thing that uh, you're talking about pike fishing, all these weed beds are not created equal. And what I mean by that, uh, Troy and I are actually fishing more um, like main lake weed beds. And if you can find these big weed beds that access that deep water, they seem to be better at this time of the year. You know, early season fishing, you can fish way in the back ends of those creeks way back in the big shallow flat bays. Not at this time of the year. You wanna find this main lake stuff. 
was on a number eight Shadrath. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. We are loaded for bear. We got You know, there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on a planet. You know, it's been a good day of pike fishing when I have four band-aids on my hand from a little bit of northern pike teeth. You know, as, as far as rods and reels go, uh, I actually have four different rods and reels in the boat that Troy and I have been using, but the interesting thing is they're almost all the same power and action and length. What we're doing is, you know, throwing a lot of high-speed baits. We're hooking big fish and fighting big fish. This happens to be a St. Croix Legend X medium heavy, moderate, fast tapered rod. The medium heavy is really nice in the fact that I can cast these big baits, but the up front, it's relatively soft tip that bl blends farther back down the taper of the blank. Northern Pike, you know, we make really big, strong surges and ripping around the boat. And that moderate, fast taper enables you to uh, maintain tight on, on the fish. It's a, just, they're just great rods for fighting fish, not only presenting the lures, but fighting the fish. As far as a reel goes, this is a Daiwa Tatula 300 7.1 gear ratio reel. It's got the 90 millimeter uh, paddle handle. It's got a really fast pickup because we're actually doing a lot of burning and putting a lot of erratic behavior into the bait. So we're putting a lot of slack line and you want that pickup, a lot of times they'll pick up the bait and they'll running towards you. So you're reeling up really fast to hook them. But it's a, it's a nice reel in the fact that it's also actually is a little bit bigger spool. Right now I actually have this spooled with 30 pound test uh, suffix uh, performance braid. And uh, it's just a great combination for this style of fishing. This is absolutely my favorite rod and reel combo for big, big snake fishing. What's nice about pike fishing up here, we're getting numbers of big fish. You know, when you're talking about 15 to 25 pound fish, not just one fish. You know, if you're musky fishing in Ontario, you can fish a few days, but you're going after that 30 to 40 pound fish. And if you're walleye fishing, you know, you're coming up here maybe a, a eight, nine, maybe 10 pound walleye. And then right in between those size wise, you have pike like here, 15 to 25 pound pike. And you're getting action throughout the entire day. You're not fishing for one fish, you're fishing for maybe a dozen fish a day. And that makes it just so much fun. And also when you're using bass, I'm just using heavy bass gear to catch these pike. I mean, this is just, it, it, it's truly, it's truly, you know, a bucket list trip if you're looking for lots of action and big pike. Oh, oh, there we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Wow, wow, ooh, ooh. Boy, she really came up and lunched it. Yeah. Come here, little whippersnapper, you. Wow, ooh. Wow. Wow. Wow, look at that one there, Troy. Yeah. That's a good good one there. Look at him. Come here. Come here. Come here, buddy. Whoa. The Whoop, other side. No, 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 no. Whoa. Here we go. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No. Whoa. There you God. go. Wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, I, I tell you one thing. We've had one stellar day on the water. The first day at Gull Rock, staying yeah. at Five Lakes Lodge, we've been. This is like uh, how many of this? How many of these have we caught today? Oh, uh, what? A lot. Uh, yeah, a, a lot, lot. A lot. I mean, look, look at the size of this little animal. You want to get in on some really fabulous fishing? You come up and fall to Northwest Ontario, Sunset Country. At Gull, we're staying at Gull Rock up in. Red Lake, Ontario, and it's just amazing. I mean, it has been just like an amazing day on the water. Troy, what do you think about it, Troy? Oh, this is just some of the best <laughs> pike fishing. It really, it had. really it's is. Incredible. A, it's the hottest pike fish I've seen in a long, long time. It's a lot of nu uh, numbers. <laughs> numbers, numbers of fish like this. Look, we'll get her back in the water. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Wow. Wow. That is so oh. much fun. Oh. <laughs> you got me a little wet but it was worth it. <laughs> there you go, thank you. 
Hey, we all know about the crazy real estate market that we've been living in and seeing the last few years. And I've got some close friends and family that are in the business. And uh, uh, they've been encouraging me, me to, to possibly entertain the thought of selling my house. And I've got a big home. My wife passed away about almost 10 months to the day now, very close to it. You know, and I've been thinking seriously about downsizing, getting a new location, simplifying my life. And I looked at 14 different places, different locations, and I just couldn't find anything that I was comfortable with. And they keep nudging me, Al, you could make a killing. You could make a killing on your house. And uh, 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 I was sitting in my prayer time not too long ago in the morning, and I had two major criteria that I talked to them about that are important to me. One of them was convenience, convenience to town, not far from my office, my church, the food, theater, uh, anything uh, that, that uh, uh, I have to get to quick and easy. That was important to me. And the other part of it was solitude. I want some acreage. I want some space around, uh, around me. And uh, those were two important factors. And in my time talking to the Lord, I'm complaining a little bit in the morning. Why can't I find where I'm going through it? Should I do the sort of, and it's like that little tug. You know, it wasn't an audible from heaven kind of deal. It says, why don't you just look out your window? Duh, a wake up call. Why don't you just look out your window? Well, I looked out my window. I thank God and I am here. I'm guessing for duration. <laughs> and simple truth, simple thing that I had to deal with, but uh, 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 it gave me great peace. Al, look out your window. Thank you, Father. You bless me so much, and my home and place I live is one of them. Hey, from all of us here at the edge of good, safe fishing season, we'll see you on the water.